Green Room on Air. Green Room on Air. The podcast that takes you beyond the velvet curtains and into the pulsating heart of the entertainment world. Hello, everybody. This is Ray Renati, and you have reached Green Room on Air, my little space in the internet. How you doing? I hope you're doing good. I just wanted to remind you, hey, if you watch this show and you like this show, please follow the show on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and give a review and tell your friends. Also, I have a channel on YouTube. Just look up Green Room on Air with Ray Renati, and you can uh, give me a thumbs up there and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It helps a lot. Okay. That's my plug for the day. How y'all doing? Okay, it's been a really depressing week. Since I was a little boy, the two main things that I remember were Vietnam and how that affected our society and and the conflicts in the Middle East. And these conflicts in the Middle East are still happening. You know, it all started with the the foundation of Israel as a country, and I am not against that at all. Please don't get me wrong. But this thing is so complicated, I am not going to even pretend to understand the ramifications, the reasons, the ins and the outs. I watch Al Jazeera TV, and then I watch Israeli TV, and all I do is get really confused. I'm not, I am not drawing moral equivalency between the two sides. I think that Hamas is evil. All they want to do is kill Jews. They're a jihad organization like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Hezbollah. And they're killing Jews, just like they think it's, they're supposed to do. It's disgusting. But then you have Israel bombing the hell out of Gaza where they have no iron dome like Israel does to protect them from incoming rockets. On the other hand, Israel says they need to do that in order to to flush out the terrorists who are hiding amongst the people. I don't know the answer. I just don't know the answer. All I know is it's extremely sad. It's making me depressed. And I need to start uh, I need to stop watching the news, but I won't because I'm a political and news junkie. Anybody out there who has family or friends involved directly with this, if you're listening, I, I my heart goes out to you. Let me know if you have any ideas about this. Send an email to Ray Renati, R-A-Y-R-E-N-A-T-I at gmail.com or greenroomonair at gmail.com, and I will be happy to discuss this with anyone. All right, you know, what I'd like to do today is talk about a TV show that I have been watching on Stars Television, of all places. If you want to watch some shows, some TV that is not very well known, but is good, Go to Stars and do a, do a trial subscription. You have the TV show Outlander on there, which is a lot of fun. And one that is a sleeper show that I found, and it's called Minx. It's a comedy series that follows the story of the main character, Joyce Prigger. She's a young feminist. She's a writer, and she she wants to create the first erotic magazine for women in the 1970s in Los Angeles. Now, that's not how it starts off. She's very reluctant, but eventually that's where she gets. She teams up with this guy named Doug Renetti, and when I first saw that name on his business card when he gave it to her, I almost went into shock because it's almost my name. My last name is R-E-N-A-T-I, and his is the character's name is R-E-N-E-T-T-I. That's the closest I've ever seen anyone on TV come to having my name. So that was kind of cool. Now, he's, uh, I guess, what you would call a low-rent publisher of adult entertainment who sees an opportunity to make money and gain respect in the industry when he meets Joyce. Together, they face various challenges and obstacles, such as the conservative politicians, 
sexist rivals, moral dilemmas, and then conflicts between each other, which are the most fun. <laughs> As they try to get this thing off the ground, this magazine called Minx. And the main characters are Joyce Prigger, played by the wonderful Ophelia Lovabond, who is, to me, an unknown young British actress. I guess she's probably in her 30s now. I went and watched one of her first films that was from, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago. And it was on, the, what's that island between in the Mediterranean, between Africa and, and Europe? I forgot. It's a, it's a lo, tiny little island that was placed there. And the acting is good. I didn't get through the whole film because it's an independent film and it's kind of self aware and weird but she's she's cute and when she was young she was gorgeous but she's still very attractive and but she 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 does a fantastic job Ophelia love a bond she's smart as the character she's ambitious passionate about feminism and feminist writing to the point where it's very funny she wants to change the world basically with her magazine but she struggles with her own insecurities and doubts and so that conflict really adds a lot to the show and Doug Renetti played by the very funny actor, Jake Johnson. He's the co-founder of and publisher of Minx. He's really savvy as a businessman. He knows how to sell sex, that's for sure, because he has a ton of porn magazines already at his bottom dollar entertainment publishing company. But he also has a soft spot for Joyce and her vision. And he's often conflicted between his uh, professional and his personal interests because he likes her. Then there's a character, Bambi, played by Jessica Lowe. She's the stereotypical sort of blonde airhead, but not stupid character. And she does it well. The only problem I have with her is her diction. As she tries to do this character, sometimes she just talks too fast and too high and doesn't enunciate. I, we keep on missing what she says. I, she's also she also had a part on the Righteous Gemstones on HBO where she played a very aggressive Southern preacher woman, and I understood every word she said. So it's the character that's causing the problem. Maybe I just can't hear high pitches anymore, so it might be me. But Bambi is Joyce's best friend and co-editor of Minx. She's a former noon model for Doug for all of his magazines. And then she becomes the centerfold coordinator. She's fun-loving, adventurous. It's fun. Very fun. One of the most interesting things I find about this show, and it doesn't surprise me at all, but it, it marks the incredible pr prudeness, is that a word? Prudeness of our society and the incredible religiosity of of American society, because if this were in England, it wouldn't happen. So let me tell you what I'm talking about. One of the things I like to do is go into Rotten Tomatoes, the website Rotten Tomatoes, and look at the tomato meter. <laughs> there's a tomato meter for reviewers, professional reviewers, and there's also one ones for uh, a tomato rating for audience scores. And the tomato meter for the reviewers is 98% fresh. That means 98% of all professional television reviewers on television, in newspapers, and blogs love the show. However, on Rotten Tomatoes, the people who've gone in and rated the show, only 45% like the show. So it... It's an absolute failure with audience members on Rotten Tomatoes. Now, that doesn't mean it's an absolute failure at large, because I think what happens is the very moralistic sort of people will go in en masse and purposely rank this show poorly. And this just, again, to me, shows the ridiculous amount of religiosity that we have in this country and the and how many prudes we have. And, you know, in England the, and France, there's so much more nudity on movie and TVs that no one cares. Here, the problem is, and I'll read some of the reviews to you, and I'll tell you what it is exactly. 
is there's a lot of full frontal male nudity in this show. Now, nobody has a problem with full frontal female nudity. Well, not nobody, but there's much less of a problem in our society. But if you have full frontal male nudity, people see that as extremely offensive. Now, if you look at some of the reviews from the top critics, let's say, I agree with all these things. I mean, Candace Frederick from Huffington Post says showrunner Ellen Rappaport keeps Minx oddly breezy, rah rah, and incredibly safe. Now, see, she goes the other way with it. Uh, that is enough to keep viewers entertained. But the subtext is white fantasy and innovation. True. Minx, the publication. Now, this is from Katie Waldman from The New Yorker. Minx, the publication, is politics, is politics just dressed up as fun. Minx, the show, is fun that barely bothers to dress up as politics. Wait, let me say that again. <laughs> Minx, the publication, is politics dressed up as fun. Minx, the show, as opposed to the magazine, is fun that barely bothers to dress up as politics. True. At least at first. But what it really cares about are its characters. Very true. When she says at least at first, later on, and I think I started to get into that in season two, and maybe they knew season three wasn't going to happen. I don't think it is. I'm not sure. But they, they got a little preachy, and the show was still good, but it got a little bit too preachy, but it's okay. It's still a good show, episode four, I think, in season two. For all the shows, this is from scroll.in, from Udita Junjuala. For all the show's bold imagery of men and women in the nude, the fun and wit, and love bond's bouncy performance, Joyce is the one character who doesn't shed her skin. That's true. She doesn't ever. Anyway, the critics love it. Now, if you go to the audience members, okay, and there are a number of people who gave it four or five stars, but the majority, it's one, two, three stars. Well, for fairness, let me read a five star from an audience member. Minx is great fun and quite the entertaining experience. A nice blend of comedy and serious social commentary that is still relevant in many aspects for today's society. It appears many reviewers here may have been offended at these observations of those times. <clears throat> True! But I suggest you decide for yourself, instead of trusting review bombers, I'm with the critics in this one. I think that's part of it. I think that a lot of people may have not lived through this time in the 70s. It's, 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 it's placed in the 60s and 70s, and it perfectly captures the attitude around sex and sexual issues at the time. And either these people were offended at the time, if they're old enough, which you'd have to be pretty old <laughs> like me, or they're from the politically correct young generation that we have now. Here, let me just read you the some of the hundreds of one-star and two-star reviews and half-star reviews. Here for Betty Y, very bad taste. Surprised this got made in 2022. Sissy G, what the hell is wrong with these people? Sophie D, crude and vulgar. Male nudity does not equal comedy. See? Now, I believe that almost all these people, that's what's in their mind, although they may not type it in here. One star from Linda, problematic and, problematic and tone deaf. Okay, tone deaf is one of those code words now that we have in our country that means you're not progressive enough and you don't understand the, the, what you're supposed to say and not say because of the word police that exists in our left wing Society. I am left wing, I guess. I'm a Democrat, but I'm certainly not on to agreeing with uh, progressive and lefties who want to squelch people's First Amendment rights and people who want to, you know, police pronouns and get angry when you don't use the right ones and all that kind of crap. And that's what we got a lot of. And then also, you also have here the religious right. Diane D. just came across this. It's just porn you can get free on the internet. Surprised that streaming service is lowering themselves to this. That is absolutely wrong. This show is not porn. This show is satire, and it's funny, and it actually is extremely accurate 
in terms of the attitudes of those times. I was there. Ruth R., this show makes you wonder what type of people they are hiring at HBO Max. No, thank you. First of all, it's not even on HBO Max. It's on Stars. okay? Peta P, yuck, kind of vile and creepy and perverted. All right, you get the picture. And I could go on. There are literally hundreds of these here. Hundreds. And this is indicative of our society. And this is, as I see it, one of the huge problems of our society because people are super judgmental. People are very, very pent up. I bet you almost all of these one stars, except for the extreme lefties who uh, hated for other reasons, I bet a lot of these people are MAGA Trump supporter people. I bet you anything. Of course, I'll know, I will have no way of proving that. It's just my intuition. Yeah, so if you want to get involved in this controversy, <laughs> get a trial subscription to Stars because I'm guessing probably most of you don't subscribe, and check it out. It's really worth it. Or subscribe for a month or two and watch the show. There are two seasons. I don't know if there's going to be a season three. Hey, let's find out. Let's see, season three. Oh, God, I almost dropped my microphone. Season three, Minx. I have it on the stand here. I almost knocked it over. This hasn't yet been renewed by stars, but the good news is that season two just finished airing last week. So a renewal could, a renewal could happen. Entertainment Weekly said she absolutely wants a third season. Well, okay, so there's a possibility. Yay, I hope it happens because I love the show. M-I-N-X, Minx, on stars. All right, everybody, that's, that's it for today's show. I hope that these wars come to an end. Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, all these places. I don't want World War III. I don't want that for my kids and my grandkids, if I have them ever, and for anybody. No. And I need to get some exercise and work uh, on an audition I'm doing. And I need to get out of this funk because it's not fun. The news affects me. The world affects me. And I suspect it affects many of you, too. All right, folks. Much love and peace. And until next time, I will see you on the boards. Take care of yourselves. We all just try to be heard. Try to make our mark in this world. So stand up straight and speak loud. And in the end, I'm sure you'll do them proud. Everything will come through. It depends on all that you choose. Now raise your spirit to the sky. Cause it's time for us to realize.